All right, hello everyone. Uh, this is Fireworks, and welcome to the tutorial for uh, modifying the battle types in the Generation 6 Pokemon games. This is going to be going over the process for Pokemon X, Y, Omega Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire. If you're looking for the tutorial for Pokemon Black, White, Black 2, and White 2, uh, there is a different video covering those uh, games, so look for that elsewhere. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to be going at pretty much following the instructions that are listed on the website and on the GitHub page. So you can follow along with those or just keep on watching and replicate what I am doing. Uh, uh, this is a little bit of an involved process, but as long as you take your time, follow along, and if you mess up and go back, uh, you should be good. Uh, so for this process, there is a couple of tools that you're going to need. Um, for some of these tools, you're going to need some of the programming language uh, runtimes installed on your machine. So for the Pokemon randomizer that we will be using, you're going to need Java installed on your machine. And for the .NET 3DS toolkit and the battle converting tool, you're going to need the .NET uh, runtime. Um, those links are over on the website. Um, and make sure those are installed before you begin. Otherwise, some of these programs may not run on your machine. Uh, for the actual tools that we need, um, we're gonna need the Pokerando ZX. Uh, this is the universal Pokemon randomizing tool uh, that is used pretty much all over the place. Um, we need at least version 4.6. Some of the controls in that um, are added in that version and be up above so make sure you have that uh, you're also going to need the .NET 3ds toolkit as mentioned uh, this will allow us to extract the files from the rom and be able to interact with them directly and then we are going to need the gark tool which will extract even further files from the rom uh, all the way down to their bin files um, and then we are also of course going to need our battle converter the latest version is 2.3 Okay, so to start off, um, you're gonna need a copy of the game, obviously. I got Pokemon Alpha Sapphire right here. Um, if you don't have a copy of one of these games, um, Google is gonna be your friend in finding those. I cannot say where to get them. Uh, this is my own copy uh, that I have gotten from my own cartridge. So once you have your game, uh, we're gonna then open up Pokerando ZX which is right here, and we have a number of files in here. Um, I'm gonna be working on Windows. Uh, Mac and Linux might be a little different, and I don't even know if all the tools work on those OSs. So if you have one of those, I'm sorry, I can't really help you. Um, but for Windows, we just need launcher windows.bat, and we are gonna open up that. Get a little window here, and if you have Java installed, you should get this large dialog right here. Uh, to get started, we're going to hit open ROM and then navigate to our ROM. So on my desktop, I have Pokemon Alpha Sapphire open. We should see support complete here, Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, everything looks good. And you can go and modify this however you want. There's just three things that we're going to need to set ourselves. And all those are going to be underneath faux Pokemon. So in here, we're going to have to turn on random. Uh, for the trainer Pokemon, just so we can modify uh, their data a little more. And we're going to turn additional Pokemon for all trainers. And we're going to set that number to two. Um, this is so every single trainer in the game will have at minimum three Pokemon. So for triple battles, they'll have enough Pokemon to partake in that. Same with rotation battle. If you're going to be doing doubles or singles, you don't need as many, but two is just a safe number to cover all of the battle types. Um, we're also going to be turning on double battle mode. Uh, this just puts the trainer AI in a version where it won't attack itself. Um, and that's going to be required for double and triple battles. Rotation battle doesn't really need it, um, but the battle converter tool will handle any changes to that that it really needs but I always turn it on in here just to be safe. 
Um, and the other thing, it's not necessarily required, but I do recommend it by us adding in a bunch of additional Pokemon to every single trainer, you're going to get a lot more XP as you go through the game. So I recommend turning on the percentage level modifier and putting that to about 20%. I've kind of found that that's kind of the good balancing point. Um, might need to go a little higher. I don't know. I'm, it's really hard to <laughs> balance this, right? Uh, so you can play with that number, but I've been going with 20%. So that's what I've been running with and what I recommend, but open to you. All right. So that's what I pretty much would recommend for setting up. You can go and make any other changes that you want. And once you are complete, we can save this randomization to the game to do that. It's going to be randomized right here. And since we're on a 3DS game, we're going to get a different types of output here. Uh, for our purposes, we're going to click on CXI. And we're going to save that somewhere. So I'm going to just put it on my desktop and call it Pokemon Alpha Sapphire Randomized. And click Save. So this will take it a little bit. But it's going to go through, modify all the trainers, give them all the more Pokemon, put them into double battle mode, change the level modifier, and then whatever else you changed. Uh, we can see it working on the window behind here. Uh, we'll see it's starting to write out a whole lot of information. And eventually this will hit done and we'll get a new pop-up over here. This is indicating do you want the log of what changes were made to your game. I don't need that for this particular tutorial, but if you just want to go through that and see what Pokemon got randomized, you can hit yes. But I'm going to hit no, and this just tells me that it was completed. So I'm going to hit done, and we can close this out. And close this window here. So now we got our Alpha Sapphire randomized game right here. Um, just to make things easier, I'm going to move our vanilla copy away because we don't need that anymore. Um, let me go back and pull this back up. All right. So the next part is we're going to start having to extract files from the ROM. Uh, before we begin, let's make a new folder to place all these in. So I'm going to do new folder and just name this. It can be whatever you want, but I'm going to just call this Sapphire files. All right. Once that is complete, we're going to open up .NET 3DS toolkit and open the toolkit form.exe. And that will give us a little window right here. And here we're gonna set these up so we can extract the files out. So I'm gonna browse to our ROM. So that's our Alpha Sapphire Randomize, hit okay. And then go to our output directory. That's the folder that we just created. So I'm gonna select Sapphire files, and hit okay. So I should see those two names in the window, randomizer and Sapphire files. And I'm gonna have this set to auto. And then I'm going to hit extract. And then this will start the extraction process on that ROM. We can open up Sapphire files and see that working. Um, we don't need that open, but we have Sapphire files and we can see some of the files are being imported or exported to this directory here. And we're just waiting for this to change to ready. So it will take it a little bit of time because I mean, these are pretty big games. So it's pulling out all those files um, so we can go and modify them. So we'll just wait a little bit for this to finish up. All right, we are now ready. I uh, just turned it to the ready information right here and we have all of our files right here. I'm going to leave this open because we're going to need this for later. And we are now going to go to the Gark tool. So in here, there's just one EXE. And it'll open up this small little dialog. We can now close this. And this we will now use to extract all the bin files from a single Gark file. So the particular file that you're going to want is going to differ between X and Y and Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. All of them are going to follow the same kind of path, but it's a different uh, final file that we're going to be selecting on. So we're going to go to open file. Um, I'm going to reset this. And from our root of all of our Sapphire files, we're going to go to ROMFS. 
A03. And then in here is where it's going to be a different between the two. For X and Y, you're going to click on file 8. For Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, it's going to be file 6. So for our purposes of the tutorial, we're going to be clicking on file 6 and click open. And in here, we should see that selected in our directory and hit process. We're then going to get an alert once it's completed saying that 950 files have been extracted. That's the exact number of trainers that are in Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby. I said that backwards that time. <laughs> um, for Pokemon X and Y, that number is going to be 785. So I'm going to hit OK, and we're going to leave that open because we're also going to need that later. So now in our Sapphire files, if I go to ROM A03, we will now see we have a folder here with the file number that we selected with an underscore. We're going to rename this folder to be TR data, just all one word. That way we tell the battle converter, this is the folder we want to modify. Um, the battle converter does some really low level processing on files. So just to be sure you're selecting the right folder, you have to name it this. So we have TR data right in there. And now we can open up the battle converter. So we're going to open up here and we go to triple battle converter. Uh, for our case, it's the exe and we will have our other tool. So here I want to browse to our TR data folder. So I'm going to hit browse and go to my desktop, Sapphire, ROM A03, and then TR data and hit select folder. So we should see most of that in there. It doesn't expand. That's fun. Uh, <laughs> but that folder is now selected. We now need to select the game that we are working with. So we are working with Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. And then we want to select what battle type do we want. Here we have all the standard ones. We have singles, doubles, triples, and rotation. That will set every trainer in the entire game to that specific type. There's also another option here for random. This will randomize what the battle type is for any trainer. So you don't know which one it's going to be. Uh, for the purposes of this, we're going to do rotation battles. Are okay. So now that we have our two options selected and we have our TR data folder uh, set up, we should now just have to hit convert. And we'll get a success pop up here that says process 950 trainers. If you see that, everything's been modified. You're good on that front. Now we got to repackage everything. If something went wrong, you'll get a warning with a little bit of information. If you end up seeing one of those, feel free to join the Discord server and tell me what error you encountered, or you can log an issue on the GitHub. All right, so now that we process our trainers, we can hit OK. We can now close the battle converter and all of our information to our data is now complete. Uh, we are actually gonna go to the Gark tool and click on open folder. We're then gonna navigate to that TR data folder. So we're going to go to Sapphire Files, ROM FS A03. And we should see TR data. I'm going to click on that and hit OK. You should see that in there. And then I'm going to hit process. So we see pack successful, 950 files packaged to the GARC. I'm going to hit OK. And we are now done with the GARC tool. We can close that out. Now, in our Sapphire files, we now see what we have just created. We see a trdata.gark file. We need to now rename this to replace the file that we modified. So since we are in uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, that was file six. So I'm going to delete file six, and I'm also going to delete our old trdata folder. The new trdata.gark file I'm going to rename that, highlight all of it, and put 6. If you're on X and Y, this number is going to be 8. I'm going to hit OK, or hit Enter, and we'll get a rename saying, hey, you don't have a file extension. That is OK. We 
there's no file extensions for these files. So I'm going to hit yes. And now we have six. So now we have modified that six and it's back into our deconstructed ROM. We now need to reconstruct our ROM back together. Um, so I'm going to close this because I no longer need that. In our .NET 3DS toolkit, I'm going to go to build. Our source directory is going to be that Sapphire files. So I'm going to click Sapphire files, the very root of all those, and hit OK. And now we need to output our ROM. So I'm going to hit browse. And here I'm going to name it Sapphire Rotation Battles. You can name it whatever you want and then hit save. The key thing here now is on the ROM output, we want zero key encrypted CCI. And then we just have to hit build. We should get another window popping up here and it will now give us some information. Now it's building this ROM from those files that we've created there. Uh, and this will take a little bit of time because um, it's again, a big game and it's having to write all this to a new file. And it should go away and say ready. We can now close the .NET 3DS toolkit. And we will see we have a new ROM right here, Sapphire Rotation Battles.3DS. This is your completed game. You can all go load this into Citra or whatever emulator that you are using. And that should have all your effects applied to it. Um, there are, just like the Gen 5 games, there are a couple of limitations in terms of battles that couldn't be converted. In X and Y, that's going to be the first rival fight, the battle for the Mega Ring, and maybe some others that are not too, I'm not too sure of. There might be some errors later on. I haven't done a full playthrough of X and Y, um, but those ones for sure I know. Um, and then for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, the first rival fight will also always be a single battle with one Pokemon in it. Um, and then... As you're playing through the game, if you did do triple or rotation battles, I would highly recommend uh, making sure there's always three Pokemon in your team. Because if you have less than that and you start one of the, a triple or a rotation battle, you might run into some issues in terms of what gets sent out. Uh, I think in the Gen 6 games, you get the Null Bulbasaur out, which can't do anything. It's a little glitchy and it might uh, run into errors with that. So just make sure you have three Pokemon in your team if you're doing it triple rotation. If you're doing double battles, make sure you have at least two. Uh, but that should be it. Um, if everything went right and you got this file to the end, um, you're good to go. So if you have any questions or you run into any problems, uh, you can leave a comment on this video and I will might get to it. If you want a quicker response, uh, join the Discord server. There's a technical support channel in there where you can ask for some help or log an issue on the GitHub page um, and we can get something resolved. So, all right, that is it. I hope you have fun and good luck.